Well, indeed, thank you very much, and a very good afternoon to you, to Sarah. Yes, we are at the e, e, uh, that is the ESC Trade Integration Summit that is currently being held here in Nairobi, just looking at ways of improving trade among East Africa community country. And one of the, uh, we are currently now joined by the PS in the Ministry of Trade, that is Dr. Chris Kipto, to e elaborate uh, more uh, to us about some of the issues that they will be looking at in this uh, two-day forum. Uh, Dr. Chris, thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, one of the things that has come up in the, uh, in the uh, first uh, part of the session is the issue of uh, of tax and also so how do we improve this how do we make sure that uh, we make it easier for Kenyan traders and other East African traders to get their goods across borders thank you very much uh, this is a conference of three days starting today to Friday and uh, it's a conference being held uh, as part of marking 20 years of existence of East African community when the ESC treaty was adopted or signed in 1999 uh, five years later, we adopted the first pillar of customs union, which is uh, brought, which brought together. I mean, uh, the three countries, the, all the four countries, now five, and Sudan is coming on board. But five countries are within a customs union, where we have one common external tariff of 25 percent, uh, 10 percent, and zero percent. So we are, and then we have gone through. Uh, in 2010, we have adopted a common market. And we have now enacted a law for bringing into being a monetary union and ultimately going into a political federation. The rallying call of East Africa is one people, one destiny. So it's a reflection now to say in the last 20 years, how have we done? And clearly there is a lot of progress that has been made. Uh, trade has improved uh, between the two countries compared to the period before. All right, uh, Dr. Chris, there's also the issue that a lot of traders in the country, one of the key things that they have complained about is that Kenya has opened up its borders, but they're not receiving the same reciprocation from other East African countries. No, those, yeah, no, those trade disputes are on, and we have had uh, several meetings. With Tanzania, we have had a lot of meetings with Tanzania, with uh, Uganda also, we have bilateral engagements. And these engagements have been at the presidential level. Our own president has been uh, having those bilateral discussions. Good progress has been made. In fact, we were in Arusha recently to, to review the progress. And clearly, we see a lot of non-tariff barriers have been resolved. Just the latest is confectionery goods to Tanzania, which now are moving uh, into Tanzania freely. But before, we had a challenge. And so, we are very much alert to this. And this is one of the things we are reflecting here in this conference. Why is it that we are still having non-tariff barriers in, in a community that... It, you know, aspires to be one people, one destiny. We cannot improve our competitiveness if we are making each other not being able to trade freely. Yet the rest of the world is growing. That is why in the last 20 years you will see that while trade has improved or grown, intra-regional trade hasn't grown as much because we still have a lot of, uh, you know, non-tariff barriers here and there. All right, uh, Bona says we've also seen the likes of uh, South Sudan trying to come on board uh, and also join the e uh, ESC community. What does this portend for, our, for Kenyan producers, for Kenyan manufacturers, uh, as well as other regional manufacturers? It's good for Kenya because uh, if ESC is now embracing South Sudan as a member of the customs union, you know, that customs union will bring in the discipline and therefore a lot of goods will now go to South Sudan from Kenya on a duty-free quarter free basis and that is good because there will be then that means we will be more competitive than now where we have to pay our goods have to pay tariffs in in south sudan so it's good if the security situation in south sudan improves we expect kenya to do well because they have always done well anyway all along since south sudan became independent kenya has been the great pillar we have our equity bank we have kcb we have so many uh, traders in south sudan and we expect that more trade uh, in the direction of South Sudan will continue. Even Sudanese also will begin to trade more with Kenya. Okay, uh, Bona Pace, there's also the aspect of uh, delayed clearance at the port, be it by KRA, be it by the uh, other officials that, uh, that deal with custom issues. How do we address this as a government? And uh, what are you currently doing as the Ministry of Trade to ensure that goods that are shipped into the country are cleared uh, in good time? I think if there are any challenges, you, they, they are not as they were before. A good now that, uh, that, that clearance time for a, a truck to move from Mombasa to Uganda, it used to take 14 to 15 days. Now it takes four to five days. It's very much improved. Dwelling time at the port, what we call sheep turnaround, have all improved. And, uh, and, and so I can say the clearance 
time has improved. There are only a few challenges. And what we have done recently is actually to remove all the agencies at the port. And we have only left Kenya Revenue Authority and CAPS to be the only ones at the port uh, working also with KPA to, to ensure that there is clearance. All the other agencies will work, uh, provide back-end services, and we expect that this will improve drastically. Thank you very much, because again, this is uh, actually, if this is, can be actualized, it will pertain for a bigger uh, a, a, a bigger that that sort of that is customer base for our Kenyan producers. I indeed this is a conversion that we will be following keenly to be able to see how it unfolds and how we Kenyans and Kenyans as a country can be able to tap into this East African market to improve uh, the living standards of our people. But for now, back to you, Sarah.